For Krima Media's Polity, I'm Sane Lameni. Researcher and analyst Professor Raymond Sadna joins me for Sadna's View, a weekly commentary on South Africa's political scene. Welcome, Professor. Thank you. If we can start with Morgan Freeman's recent tweet, which says, stop talking about it. I'm going to stop calling you a white man, and I'm going to ask you to stop calling me a black man. It looks like his quote is simply saying that, like, if we stop talking about racism, it, it will just disappear. What can you make of his quote? Yeah, you know, it's a mistake to think that uh, you can remove uh, race. Race is unscientific as a construct mm. uh, and it was invented, it's a socially constructed term uh, which people doubt its scientific validity but it does have social consequences. Mm. The way I live, the way I've lived in the past has got something to do with being a white person. Mm. I grew up with advantages that black people, especially Africans, did not have. And if you remove, uh, if you deny being a black person, I think um, uh, Musi Maimani said, if you do not see that I'm black, you do not see me. But then he later said, if you only see that I'm black, then you also don't see me. So we've got to get a balance between understanding the qualities of human beings, mm -hmm. but in this discussion we're having now, um, you've got to understand that historically apartheid was not just a little, a small mistake. Mm -hmm. It affected the opportunities in life of black people. Uh, there were a very high proportion of people who were policed, who were imprisoned, were black people much higher than uh, in relation to the proportion of the population that they were. Mm. So they had these disadvantages and the importance for the present is that some people say, oh, you must just get over it, it stop dwelling on race, mm. move to a post-racial society. Now, how can we move to a post-racial society when the advantages, it's called social capital, amongst other things, the social capital that I, as a white, have uh, put me in a better position than black people. For example, I was initially qualified in law. Mm -hmm. Now, I never practiced, although I'm admitted as an advocate, but had I practiced, I would have had a better chance of being briefed by attorneys because of the social networks that mm. I had, most attorneys were then whites and are still mainly whites, and they would have been more likely to brief me because they knew me or they knew my family and things like that, mm. uh, or they came from the same school, and those things still persist. And uh, there are barriers, even though they are trying to fast track the advancement of black people in industry, in the professions, they start off with disadvantages. The starting points are not the same. Mm. And the starting points also affect the skills that you've had the opportunity to acquire. Um, if you take, for example, uh, students at University of Johannesburg, to which I'm attached at the moment, the professor of African languages was telling me that some of the students are coming from the East Rand and they have to take about six different forms of transport to get to UJ. Now the library, as far as I can make out, is not, was not open on Sundays. Now how do they access internet on Sundays? Do they have internet at home? It's very unlikely. Mm. Do they have electricity at home? Uh, do they have the money to pay for it? Where is the in internet, the transport, all these things? So that even though universities, including UJ, which has got a high proportion of people who are poor, poorer than at Wits and other places, they make a lot of efforts, 
But there is a big uh, problem which uh, race accounts for. Mm. And what is whiteness? Well, by whiteness, I understand uh, uh, not just the fact that I'm physically white mm. as opposed to physically black, mm. not just that I have privileges historically, but that because of growing up as a white person, I have a relationship to black people which has built in advantages for me and built in, in disadvantages for black people. Mm -hmm. Now, at the time of the Fees Must Fall movement, uh, what the students um, punctured is the myth that everyone entered university on an equal basis. The fact of the matter, and I had observed this when I was a sessional lecturer at FITS in 2012, that a lot of Africans would arrive late and wasn't because of African time and all this sort of nonsense. It was because they didn't have their own car, they didn't have mommy dropping them off, mm. they had to come by taxis, and as you know, in some places, the taxis don't leave exactly at eight o'clock, mm. they wait to fill up, yes. and then uh, you late when you get to the next connection mm. and you have to wait for the taxi, then that taxi waits to fill up. Mm. Now, there were problems like that, but there were also problems in terms of whatever grant the people may have had. For may, very many of them were hungry. Um, very many of them had to save money to send home from whatever grants they got and some of them went into commercial sex work in consequence mm. because they have very few ways of surviving. So the environment was not uh, taking into account the different uh, entry points, the fact that if you go to most of these universities, you have to fill in the admission form online mm. And it's very difficult to understand in the first place, and you've got to spend a lot of time on the internet. You've got to have a reliable internet connection because mm. you're busy doing it and then just collapses. Yeah. So whiteness is a relation, relational concept. It's not just power, it's not just privilege, mm. but it incorporates that. It may also incorporate attitudes that are derived historically from coming from a white family, but it's a very important concept to understand as being broad and uh, not simply one person having privileges or having the rights that they had under apartheid. Mm. And D.A. Lee Damusi Maimane recently came under fire from his white conservative counterpart for saying that a white privilege as well as black poverty must be confronted. Do you think he was I think right? he's correct. Mm. It's all, it needs to be taken as an obvious problem mm. to deal with. Mm. And I think the people who are unhappy with that are the predominantly white leadership of the DA. The DA has got a white problem. Mm. You know, they used to talk about the native problem uh, and the problem in the DA is really a problem that they want to appeal. They want to take Gauteng, say, they want to appeal to black people, especially Africans. But they, uh, a lot of people feel that the whites control the party. And you can see this in the way they react viscerally mm. to things like that. Mm. And how are we going to get rid of racism in South Africa? Well, it takes a long time. Mm. Uh, we're not going to get rid of it by color blindness, mm. by saying, I mm. see no color. Yeah. Uh, but you're going to get rid of racism if you see the, dis the character of the disadvantages that people face as black people and the advantages that whites place, uh, experience, the structures of domination. Mm. 
Mm. The structures of domination or of advantage are not the same now as they were under apartheid. Mm. And we've got to uncover how they continue and eradicate them. Mm, if I may ask the last question, Professor, yesterday, many South Africans were outraged again by the AfriForum CEO now saying that he doesn't think that apartheid was a crime against humanity. What do you make of statements like that from the AfriForum? You know, I didn't myself um, engage a lot with AfriForum, mm. but when it wasn't just a slogan mm. to call apartheid a crime against humanity, a part of the UN structure is the International Law Commission mm. and a number of jurists from all over the world. I think in the late 1960s, early 1970s, they argued on legal grounds that apartheid conformed to the definition of a crime against humanity. And it would fall under that category because it has systematic racial discrimination, not mm. just occasional outbursts like me, if I were to call you a Kaffir or something like that, mm. that would be an occasional outburst yeah. or a prejudiced individual. Mm. But it was built into the system. They also said there were genocidal ele elements as in uh, doing things that led to deaths of lots of people as in forced removals and mm. things like that. There were a number of reasons that they gave and this is not just a slogan, it is something that has a legal basis. Mm. Uh, and I think every forum is showing their true colors in the sense that the people they met at the White House are extreme right-wing people. That's their reference point. Mm. And uh, people must understand that. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. That was Professor Raymond Sadna speaking to Krima Media's polity about whiteness, white privilege, and non-racialism.